everyone, and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am showing you how to export SVGs, PNGs, and JPEGs from Leonardo Design Studio into Cricut Design Space. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at the materials and dive right in. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Explore Air 2. I'm using Neato label paper to make the stickers. I'm using four different colors of adhesive vinyl. These are various brands. There are Starcraft and Orcal, and there might even be a Cricut brand in there. This is a green standard grip mat and one sheet of card stock. The printer that I'm using is a Canon MX472. It is an inkjet printer. It is not on the market anymore. It is outdated. Now let's move into Leonardo Design Studio so that I can design the files and then we'll move into Cricut Design Space and get the files uploaded. Let's get started. I am in Leonardo Design Studio Pro. I am using a free trial that is available until September 30th, 2023. The first thing I'll do is scroll down and I will go to select the letter T for text. And once I'm in here in the text option, I will scroll down and navigate to the Samantha upright font. Now remember in here, the fonts are in alphabetical order. So that makes them a lot easier to find. Okay, so I'm going to find that font, Samantha Upright, and I'm going to type my text, Crafting with Delonda. I left one space in between each word. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to select the option to show glyphs, and that will open up a whole bunch of possibilities for making this font look a whole lot fancier. So what I'm going to do is select the C, and I'm going to look at the options that are available within the Samantha Upright font for the letter C. So I'm scrolling down, and I am going to select this C right here. I'm also going to change the letter D. I'm just going to highlight the D and scroll down. I want this D right here. And I'm also going to change the letter A. I'm just going to highlight the A, scroll down and look for a lowercase a. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. And I want this one right here, okay? Mm, do I want that one? Let me double check. I don't want to be too fancy. I don't think I like that curl at the end. Let me highlight again and select that one. I, I like that one better. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is select B for bold. And I'm going to deselect auto weld text because I will make changes to the text as I need to. I'll click apply. Now that the line of text is on my canvas, I can make it bigger and I can start to make any changes that I feel are necessary. So right here, I can, like if I hover over this, I can see all of these cut lines and I can see where this C and this R need some work. So what I'm going to do is select the whole thing. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to paths and ungroup paths. That will give me the option to move the letters individually. So if you look now, you can see I can hover over the letters one at a time. So now I'm going to select this R and I'm just going to move it over just a tiny bit like that. And I'll move all of the letters that I feel need to be moved, but I'm also being careful not to mess with the alignment because I do feel like they are already aligned nicely. Okay, so I'm going to just move this. Move the dot, move the in, 
and move this G. Okay, so now I think that looks better. Do I love the R? Do I love that R? Do I need to move that R? I feel like of all the letters that give me drama, it's always the R. Okay, oh, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so now what I'll do is select the word crafting. I'll right click on it. I'll go to paths and I want to weld it. Okay. So now I think the word with already looks nice the way that it is. If I were concerned about the W and the I being connected, I could connect them. Uh, let's see if we can make that look. Well, I think it will look a little bit strange. I, I think I don't want to do that. What I'll do, however, is right click on it and go to paths and weld it. And then I'll move it a little bit closer to crafting. OK, and then for my name, I'll select my name. I'll right click and I'll go to paths and I'll weld it. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I just weld all of it back together? And the reason why I did not do that is because I am going to change the color of these three words. So the first word is crafting, and I definitely want to change the color of that. And I think I want to go to something like this orange ish color. Okay. I think I like that. All right. And I will change the next color. I will go to, I think I want to go to, let's, let's see. I think I'll leave it black. I think I want to leave that black. And for my name, I want to change that to a reddish color. Of course, of course I do. Okay, I love all of this. Now, what I'm going to do is select the whole thing, crafting with Delanda. I'm going to right click on this and I'm just going to group it for now. I'm going to move it up here and I am going to right click on this. I'm going to go to edit, add copy. And I'll move one copy down here, like just to the middle. And I'll go to edit and add copy again. And I'll add another copy down here, like towards the bottom. Okay. So now I have three copies of Crafting with Delanda. And what I'm going to do now is go back in and select another line of text. I'm just going to select the T. And I want just a simple font something that is not a script font but something that is big and bold and we will be able to see it with no problem and for that we will use made tommy for this first line of text i'm just going to type in all caps s v g and i am going to click apply Okay, and it's red because the last color I used was red. However, I'm not going to keep it red. I'm actually going to change it to this blue color right here. Okay, so I'm just going to move that up just like right there. And what I'm going to do is right click on that. I'm going to go to edit, add copy. And right here, I'm going to change this now. Instead of it being SVG, I want this to say uh, PNG. Okay, I'm going to click apply and I'm going to right click on it again. I'm going to go to add copy and I'll move this one down and we will change the name of this one to JPEG, JPEG. Okay, we'll click apply. All right, so we have my name is all the same size. We have it with an SVG. We have it as a PNG. We, has it, we have it as a JPEG. Okay, and hopefully, even though these are all the same color, you'll be able to see that they will be different. And I'll show you how they'll be different. So now what I'll do is select all of this right here crafting with Delanda SVG. And what I'll do is click file. I'll click export artwork. And I want the selected artwork only. 
church. And because I call that an SVG, I want to save it as an SVG. Okay. Now, I'm not sure what all of this stuff is right here, this padding and all of that. So I'm not going to make any changes to this. So I'm going to keep it on file format SVG and I will click save. Once I click save, I can give it a name. I'm going to say crafting with Delanda um svg and i'll click save okay and now i'll do the same thing here i'll select all of this crafting with delanda png i'll go to file i'll go to export artwork and i will now change now this if i wanted to since I'm making this as a PNG, if I want it to be, you know, the highest quality 600 DPI, I could do that. And I can change this to a PNG, which would now be an image. And I can click save. And this time I'm going to call this crafting with Delanda PNG. Okay, I'm going to click save. And here, what am I going to call this? Crafting with Delanda let's let's make sure this is not touching okay we want to make sure that's not touching all right so this is crafting with delanda jpeg so we're going to go to file um we are going to go to export artwork uh selected artwork only file format jpeg we're going to click save and we're going to call it that crafting with Delanda JPEG and we will click save. And now I'm really finished with Leonardo Design Studio because I'm not actually going to have the software do anything else for me. I was just designing here in the software. Now let's go over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to click New Project and I'm going to upload all three of the files that I just exported from Leonardo Design Studio. So what I'll do is click Upload and I will go to Upload Image, Browse, and I'll navigate to where I have those files saved. I have a folder on my computer that I just named Leonardo and I'll upload the first one, which was Crafting with Delanda SVG. Okay, it was this one right here. I'll click Open, and there's my file. I can see that it is a, it is a cut image. I'll click Upload. Okay, here's the file. I'm going to add it to my canvas. Now, when it comes in, what I want you to notice in the layers panel is that this file has four layers. The reason why it has four layers is because it has four colors. So in order to get this cut, like if I were to click make it because I can look at my operation type and see that this is a basic cut, I'm going to actually need four colors of vinyl. This gold color, black, red, and blue. I can click make it. And what should happen is that I will get four mats. That's what would show up. But I'm not ready to do that just yet. Let's actually make this a width of, let's just put the width right at 8.0. Okay, we'll have a standard width for each of these files. All right, so now I'm going to upload the next image. I'm going to click Upload. I'll click Browse. I'll navigate to that folder again, my Leonardo folder. And the second file I saved was Crafting with Delanda PNG. I want you to make a note of what it looks like when it comes in. Now you can see it, Crafting with Delanda PNG. I would need to click complex and continue and what you'll notice is that this file does not have a background because when you upload a file in most cases as a png there is no background so i'm going to click apply and continue and i'm definitely going to select the print then cut image i'm going to select it i'm going to click upload 
Okay, I'm going to select the file again, add it to my canvas. Now, this file came in really, really big, but remember we're going with a width of eight. Okay, so now I have two files. I have my basic cut and I have my print then cut. Look at the operation type. What you should also notice here is that this file, this print then cut file is only one layer because once I click make it, if I were ready to click make it, this would be prompting me to send this to my printer. This is going to require me to cut vinyl or something like that. Okay, so now we have two files uploaded. Let's upload the third file and see how it's different from the first two files. Let's click upload. Let's click upload image, browse, and we will go to documents, go to our Leonardo folder, and we will click the crafting with Delonda JPEG. We'll click open. Do we see how it's different? how this file is different from the PNG. Remember the PNG file did not have a layer on the back. This has a white layer behind it. Let's click complex. Let's click continue. Let's look. This has a background layer. Okay, so I'm going to click apply and continue. I'm going to select the print then cut image. I'm going to click upload. Once it comes in, I'm going to Click right here and I'm going to add it to my canvas. I'm going to change it to a width of eight. Okay, changing the width to eight. All right, and I'm just gonna move it down. So now we have three different files and it's time to click make it. All right, so now let's do that. Let's click make it. All right, so now we're being prompted to uh, have our material size be eight and a half by 14. However, I'm not, I'm not using eight and a half by 14 paper. So what I am going to do is change this to eight and a half by 11. And I will just make sure to move these, uh, separate these. And I also want you to pay attention to what's going to happen when it's time for me to cut these or when it's time for these to get cut because it's going to be very different. All right. So now with this, this file, remember, this is our basic cut, right? And with our basic cut, I really don't need to use four mats for this. I can use one mat for this and I am going to use one mat. I'm using adhesive vinyl for this. So there's no need for me to mirror this. However, I am going to just move it down so I'll remember where everything goes. All right, so crafting, let's click these three dots, click move object. We'll go to the black mat, click confirm. So I know crafting needs to be in that gold color. And then width is in black. I'll just keep it right here for now. Well, maybe I'll just, yeah, I'll put it up here. Crafting width, and then my name was in red. Click move object. I'll move it to the black mat and I'll move it over here. All right. I just need to have enough space for my vinyl to be cut out. All right. And then I need to have one more uh, mat. Click move object. We'll move this also to the black mat and we'll move it down here. And I'll need to, um, I'll move it down here. So I just make sure I have enough space. I'm going to have a gold piece of vinyl on my mat. I'm going to have a black piece of vinyl on my mat. I'm going to have a red piece. And I'm also going to have right here a blue piece. So now I'm ready to click continue. So now I have two mats. The first mat will need to be sent to the printer for print then cut. And my second mat will be a basic cut. So let's do the first mat first, the print then cut. Let's click send to printer. And it, once I get my printer settings set up, because I'm going to be printing this on sticker paper and so you can see it better, I'm going to select my um, my Canon MX470 series printer. I'm not going to have the ad bleed on. I'm going to use system dialog. I'm going to select print. 
I'm going to navigate over to that printer, the Can Canon MX470 series. I'm going to select preferences. The paper type, I'm going to use other papers. I like other photo paper because it automatically changes my print quality to high. And I am going to definitely select print preview. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to select print. Let's look at the print preview. Okay, that's perfect. And everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have my image printed out. Now I will put it on a green standard grip mat in the same direction that it was facing in in Cricut Design Space. The cut setting that I like to use is the infusible ink transfer sheet setting. Even though I know this is not infusible ink, that's just the setting I like. I'm going to get this loaded and let me go over here and select infusible ink. And we will press the flashing C. Okay, it looks like it cut through perfectly. Looks good. So I'm concerned about this, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm going to remove this from the machine. And while this was cutting, I prepared my other mat with the four different colors. So what I have to do in Cricut Design Space is make sure that these colors are aligned in the right place. I'll weed this out and get ready to place it on the card stock. I will definitely speed this part up. What you will also see me do before I weed is I will cut away the excess pieces that can be used for future projects. I'm going to move all of these closer together so that I can pick them up with one piece of transfer tape. Transfer tape is reusable, so it's not trash. So once I'm finished with this, I'm gonna put it right back on this backing and I can use it again. All right, so I'm gonna place this down right on top, just like that. And I'm going to burnish, burnish, burnish like this. the scissors to get this up. I did a very good job of burnishing.
Look at that. Okay. It's not very straight, but it'll do. You'll get the picture. And I'm going to just place this on this sheet of hard stock. Right here at the top. So far, so good. All right, so we have our first layer. I'll put this over here. So this is what an SVG looks like. Remember, an SVG is a cut file. So however many colors are in your file, that's how many layers you should have. I have four layers because I had four colors. You see it's crooked, but that is not what we are here to talk about. Okay, so now let's do the PNG. Here are our files. Here is the PNG and the JPEG. I'm going to just remove this whole front back, this whole front piece. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And <laughs> we will see how this could. Look at that. Gave me a perfect cut. That's excellent. Let me make sure you can see that. See, with that cut setting, it cut all the way through. And last but not least, we have our JPEG. And this will be super easy because it has a full and complete background. So we see that. I'll just take it apart like this. So here's the JPEG. I'm going to put this one down here. And I want to do this one again with a background and I'll put it right here. Okay, I have the sticker cut out with the background and now we are going to remove it from the backing carefully. All right, so here's the sticker and we will place it down. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and you learned the difference and you know how to export files from Leonardo Design Studio and upload them into Cricut Design Space. You know the difference between an SVG, a PNG with no background, a PNG with a background, and a JPEG. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single day week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye!